Good evening and welcome to a program devoted entirely to lefties losing it. Now, before we get to the latest tomfoolery from Kamala Harris, let's start with a blast from the past. This clip of Trump derangement syndrome perfectly illustrates the concept of instant karma. He lost. He lost. He lost. Man, that that is. Oh, oh, and now you got the cops. Oh man. Yeah, he he spit on the guy. I know. He stepped on it. No, I was I was the one paying attention. You know what I mean? Tell me you got all that. I did. You did. I did. Can you send it to him? That was terrific fun from a few years ago. And, of course, he was wearing a mask alone in the car. He probably still is. Now, right now, we've got white dudes for Kamala, white women for Kamala. The Democrats are just loving going back to their segregationist roots. And now we have Swifties for Kamala. And, uh, yes, get ready to cringe. Play is going to play, 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 play. Hate is going to hate, 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 hate. Baby, I'm just going to shake, 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 shake. I shake it off. Shake it off. Oh, dear. And this young lady has an important message and she delivers it in a uh, powerful fashion. Very droll work indeed there. Now to MSNBC, whose lefty losing it hosts find new and inventive ways to embarrass themselves. They really are a gift to this segment. Here is Ari Melba accusing Donald Trump's campaign advisor, Corey Lewandowski, of defamation, threatening legal action. Now, Ari claims he never said the bandage on Trump's ear was a spectacle, you know, the bandage on the ear that was hit with a bullet in an assassination attempt. Ari claims he never said it was a spectacle, except he kind of did. He starts off here claiming Fox News ran a false piece, but they didn't. Fox News, which has been caught in defamation, ran a false piece falsely stating that I said something else that I didn't say. So I stand on that. I stand on the New York so Times So you quote. didn't say this bandage was a proper spectacle from a candidate who's obsessed say that. with spectacles. Uh, Mr. That's fair. A placard for delegates to fill in, an image for political mobilization, a spectacle for this candidate who we know is, by his own admission, obsessed with assorted spectacles. These aren't, uh, Mr. Lewandowski, I did Ari, not say Ari, that. That is a false I have it right quote. Here. And it's, it's clear. You, what you it's have a, is you a false quote. Said what it. you have is a false quote. And if you, I'm putting you on notice, if you continue to repeat falsely that I said that, you will be potentially in a defamation situation because I didn't say that. But I understand that you're working off the internet, which is a lot of false well, information. This, this is what it says I wish right you luck here. with that. And Corey Lewandowski, we gave you time. So you I appreciate you coming to the on. Prison for that. Thank you for joining me. Dude, it's all on tape. Fancy threatening defamation action as uh, on live TV when, when you've said it. Oh, dear me. I know uh, MSNBC viewers are low information nincompoops, but the rest of us have eyes and ears. Now, President Joe Biden managed to tear himself away from the beach for a few hours and he was asked about the media-created scandal about Donald Trump posing for photos and filming with Gold Star families at... Arlington National Cemetery. This was his barely coherent response. What do you think of uh, President Trump's behavior at Arlington Cemetery with the uh, the visit to the uh, to the fallen soldiers? I don't want to answer things. Let me tell you what I think. Did you watch your vice president's interview on CNN? He said, "I don't want to answer because I might tell you what I think." That's what he said. The nerve of this man, this is the puppet president who has abandoned these Gold Star families who lost their loved ones in his botched withdrawal of Afghanistan. Trump has been there for them since the start. He's the only one who showed up at Arlington National Cemetery to mark the three-year anniversary of their deaths. And that saw a deranged orchestrated media attack suggesting he is breaking protocol and politicising Arlington, a media attack involving all the usual suspects from New York Times to Washington Post and, of course, 
MSNBC. This is as dirty and rotten as lefties losing it gets, folks. The death of some American service members in Afghanistan as part of the evacuation effort there three years ago. They're trying to make that a major problem for the Biden-Harris administration in the context of this campaign. But I know a lot of military veterans were very uncomfortable with the idea that Trump was there at all and that you know he even at one point posed for a photograph with family members with a big smile and thumbs up on their face. Now, we should note some of the family members were doing the same, but that's their right. Donald Trump, it's seemingly very strange that he would do the same. And I looked at the same pictures that you're alluding to now and describing uh, at Arlington, taken uh, with the pres former president, and the thought rolled immediately through my mind, is nothing sacred? Now, it wasn't long before Kamala Harris joined these attacks. She joined the ugly pylon that, in effect, was also attacking the Gold Star families. The media and the Democrats don't care who they hurt in their desperate attempts to smear Trump. And that saw these Gold Star families, one after another, come out to defend President Trump, calling out the fake news, the deliberate disinformation that the media is engaging in, and calling out Kamala Harris too for her lies. i got to stop what I'm doing, spending time with what's left of my family to address a heinous, vile and disgusting post put out by Kamala Harris. Why did we want Trump there? It wasn't to help his political campaign. We wanted a leader. That explains why you and Joe didn't get a call. Imagine for a second that your kid is killed and there's a president of the United States willing to take you under his wing and listen to you. That's what we found in President Trump. Certainly not you and certainly not Joe Biden. You have 13 families who have been waiting over three years to so much as get a phone call. That was Mark Schmitz, Gold Star father of Lance Corporal Jared M. Schmitz. And as I said, he was one of many Gold Star families who took Kamala Harris and the media propagandists to task for the ugly narrative they are running. Kamala, your statement is nothing more than a political spin to help you look better in your presidential campaign against Donald Trump. Our kids were murdered because of your administration. And you are partly to blame for that as well. Because in over three years, we have gotten nothing but more and more lies. Just like your statement, more and more spun lies and cover-ups to make you and your administration look good. But there is one thing that you said in your statement that was true. No one should be running for president if they cannot honor military members, their families, as well as veterans. So I guess that means that you should step down, Kamala. That was Jocelyn Schmitz, Gold Star mother of Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz, who uh, died in that botched withdrawal. They're, these kids, their children died because of the botched operation under the Biden-Harris administration. Then they were ignored. And now they're being attacked because Trump is by their side. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it, you don't hate the leftist media enough. Kamala's VP pick, Tim Stolen Valor Walls, was asked about the six hostages, including an American citizen who were murdered by Hamas in Rafa. This was his response. What's your reaction to the six hostages being found dead um, in Gaza? More interested in his milkshake. Uh, we can't have that melting, can we? Uh, Megan Kelly is about to release a bombshell interview with four veterans who served with Governor Tim Walls, a man they call a habitual liar, a coward, and one who abandoned his troops. Why did you come forward? It is morally indefensible. He didn't care. It was all about him. He's a military impersonator. I don't understand how he could do it morally, or you know, he's got absolutely no integrity. The rumor went across the state 
that he had quit. And it was like, who the hell does that? I mean, it was just unbelievable that a CSM abandoned his troops, you know, 500 soldiers basically. But beyond that, there's a thousand parents out there that expect that person to lead those people into combat. He's a habitual liar. He lies about everything. He lies about stuff that doesn't make sense. You're taking a piece of their thunder and you're trying to capture it and put it in a bottle for yourself and use that for your own benefit. He basically said, I got better things to do. You know, go pick somebody else to go on a mission. Well, if you sold out your guard unit and abandoned them, I mean, what are you going to do at the national level? Fear is a reaction. Bravery is a decision. And Walls has made the wrong decision. He's not brave. I call him a coward because he is. And she's done it again. We've brought you Kamala's array of accents previously, but this next one may be my favourite. Listen to how Kamala Harris, who is of Jamaican, Indian and Irish descent and grew up in California and Canada, listen to how she spoke earlier today. You better thank a union member. <laughs> sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. Oh, how many accents are we going to hear from her in this campaign? Well, we got two in just a few hours today. Let's hear her. Uh, let's see how she spoke in Pittsburgh and then Boston. See if you can detect the subtle difference. So, friends, 64 days. <laughs> Let's just get through the next 64 days. How about that? Meryl Streep, eat your heart out. Kamala is so authentic. But then wanting authenticity and consistency from Kamala is just asking for trouble. Listen to the passionate way she defends illegal immigrants who pay people smugglers to take them across the border. And then marvel at the enormous backflip just a year later. A mother who pays a coyote to transport her child through their country of origin, through the entire country of Mexico, facing unknown peril to come here. Why would that mother do that? I will tell you, because she has decided for that child to remain where they are is worse. But what does Donald Trump do? He says, go back to where you came from. That is not reflective of our America and our values, and it's gotta end. To be clear, to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. Do not come. And I believe if you come to our border, you will be turned back. Do not come. Do not come. Of course, they did come because the Biden-Harris administration did nothing to stop the illegal immigration crisis. Record numbers have come in illegally every year of their administration. And remember Kamala and Joe telling us the anti-Israeli protesters had a point? This is the type of miscreant they are empowering. This woman in New York City today waving a Hamas flag on the day an American citizen horrifically injured, taken hostage and then executed by Hamas was buried. Just gross. And the dim-witted sheep were marching in big numbers in New York City, chanting that Palestinians should resist colonialism by any means necessary. I guess that includes rape, torture and murder. Now to some local lefties losing it here in the state of Victoria where public libraries will be places of far-left LGBTQIA++ indoctrination. Not only will children have drag queen story time, but staff have been told not to use gendered language like boys and girls and kids as young as five will be asked their pronouns. Children as young as five will be asked if they identify as she, he or they as part of a new program being rolled out across public libraries in Victoria. Library staff are being told to ask what their preferred pronouns are for children, avoid gendered language and offer pronoun badges, pins or lanyards for any visitors. As part of the Rainbow Toolkit, Victorian libraries will also add books on gender diversity and promote drag queen story time events. Let's have an antidote to all that lefty lunacy with this 
sobering warning on censorship and the assault against free speech. Here is Constantine Kisson talking with former Australian Deputy Prime Minister John Anderson about the crackdown on so-called hate speech. And note, this conversation happened before the UK's latest bout of insanity, where people are being arrested for sharing memes and robust ideas about mass migration. In Russia last year, 400 people were arrested for things that they said on social media. 400 people in Russia. Obviously, this country is very different. How many people do you think were arrested in Britain for things they said on social media last year? Come on. Take a guess. I have no idea. 3,300. Really? Arrested for what they said on social media? Yeah. What sort of things get you well, arrested? Well, one example I give in my show is uh, there was a young woman from Liverpool uh, called Chelsea Russell. People can look this up. Uh, her friend was killed in a car crash, a 19-year-old woman, and she posted the lyrics of his favourite song on her Instagram. And it was a rap song, so the lyrics contained several instances of the N-word. She was arrested, prosecuted, found guilty, given 500 hours of community service and a fine, tagged, and for a year she was under 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. curfew. Oh, good. In Britain. In Britain. In 2018. We better check in with the leader of the free world who apparently is not allowed in crowds anymore because it's dangerous. Watch this remarkable exchange. I'm not able to go out in crowds anymore. They don't keep the service on Lemmy. Because no one gets to go out. It's too dangerous. Are they terrified that he'll, I don't know, encounter some stairs? And let's talk about the pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel, anti-West misfits. They're stepping up their ugly activism. They won't let the brutal murder of hostages stop their campaign. Here they damage a building in London and admit the quiet bit out loud that this is all about decolonialism. Albert, drop Anko now! Stop the genocide! And if you could have one message to the Palestinians in Gaza watching this action, what would it be? Palestine, we're, we're with, with you. you. The Palestinians, we're with you. This is a decolonial struggle from the global south to London to Palestine. We're with you. Did you see the dude inside the building give these lovely lasses the finger? I'm sure defacing a building in London is really going to uh, stop the war between Israel and Hamas. But let's go back to that gal with the... Uh, uh, interesting hair. Can we uh, declare her hairdresser a war criminal? The only thing we can do now, we've tried protesting, we've tried everything, but now direct action is the only thing we can do. Free Palestine! We will not be complicit in this genocide. Yeah, it's all fun and games for these privileged posers. Now to New York, where the West Indian American Day Parade was marred by multiple shootings. One of the five people shot sadly died. And as is often the case of these parades, the politicians make an appearance and sometimes make a spectacle of themselves. Watch here as Chuck Schumer desperately seeks attention that is not forthcoming. <laughs> No one was interested. To uh, Matt Walsh's latest film now, and here he speaks with an anti-racism educator who is upset that her four-year-old daughter likes Disney princesses that are white. What a monster. My daughter is four years old. I am an anti-racist educator, quote unquote. She's still watching Disney movies and she is choosing a white princess over princesses of color. Have you talked to her about that? All the time. But if your child does have a preference for princesses of colour, then, well, that's a problem too. Either way, the kid is racist, you're racist, America's racist. You get the idea. My three-year-old daughter is very... Her, her favourite princess is Moana. Love it. It's a good sign. Yeah. But then I also thought, you know, is a, a little bit of cultural appropriation here. She wants to be Moana for Halloween and buy the Pacific Islander native uh, attire for my white three-year-old? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. But the, I guess the, what we might call the Moana problem here is, <laughs> is what, uh, on one hand, is cultural appropriation. On the other hand, there's gravitating towards uh, white 
characters. Right. So it's almost like no matter which way you go, you right. end up back in racism. We think every space belongs to us because we live in a white supremacist society. There you go. America is a white supremacist society, inherently racist, or is it? Let's see if this woman can stay consistent for 15 seconds. Is America an inherently racist country? I think the word inherent is challenging there. If we say... Fundamentally. Fundamentally, yes. America is racist to its bones. All of the... So inherently. Yeah. So inherently, yeah. The film is called Am I Racist? And Matt Walsh is hilarious. Now, one thing we can say about Democrat voters is they seem to be the textbook definition of low information voters. What is Harris's biggest accomplishment to date as vice president? I don't know. I don't feel comfortable doing this anymore. She, uh... She's, she's, uh, uh, was, uh, uh, vice president. she was a very good vice president. Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, getting to vice president. <laughs> I have to do more research on her, honestly. Um, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just glad to see a woman, a woman of color in charge for once. That's it. Uh, <laughs> I haven't followed her political career that closely. This is a good one. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to They start off so enthusiastic, but as soon as you ask the simplest question about uh, Harris's record, achievements, plans for the future, they stumble. I want to know, are you excited about Kamala Harris running for president? Yeah, I am. Absolutely. 100%. I am excited. It's amazing. Yeah. What was your favourite accomplishment of hers uh, as VP of the United States? Honestly, I can't answer that question. You know, honestly, that's a good question. I can't really say um, specifically. I can't, you know, I'm humble here. I can't think of anything, you know, specifically. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know. I haven't really been following politics. Here we have a former Democrat turned MAGA man, Adam Francisco, trying to conduct an interview when an enraged Kamala-loving soy boy launches an attack. This is hilarious. Because he's the best person. Look at this weird guy. Yeah, he's yeah. never lifted a weight in his life. They call us weird. Are you really going to hit me? Are you really going to hit me? You want to go to jail for assault? You look wrong with the Democrats. You look like Thomas Crooks. You look like Thomas Crooks. Can we just get... One more look at that running attack, please. Now let's go to MSNBC where the reliably hysterical Joe Scarborough is trying his darndest to be even more unhinged than Joy Reid. If you believe in American capitalism, you should be worried about Donald Trump being elected. We always talk about democracy. We always talk about democracy, Madisonian democracy under threat, because Madisonian democracy is under threat, but American capitalism also under threat. Yes, it's Donald Trump who is a threat to capitalism, not the far-left ideologue who wants to bring in Soviet-style price controls and her commie sidekick who talks about being unashamedly socialist don't ever don't ever shy away from our progressive values one person's socialism is another person's neighborliness now to cnn who are bringing back a far-left activist who rails against disinformation while pumping out nothing but disinformation yes cnn is bringing back the human potato brian stelter They've hit rock bottom and started digging. Trump might have committed treason. You say the president is using mind control. What does Putin have on Trump? The U.S. president possibly working for the Russians. Is President Trump a racist? Is the Trump presidency a criminal presidency? There's no way to tweet yourself out of impeachment. 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 Uh, what I hear on Fox is that the media is obsessed about impeachment. 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 Trump and some of his allies are promoting a hate movement against the American press. Why does Sarah Sanders still have a job? Is it time for newsrooms to think of new ways 
to convey Trump's lack of credibility, you might say the media hasn't earned your trust either. Okay, look up the stats for yourself. God bless CNN. They are slow learners. They keep getting Vivek Ramaswamy on for hostile interviews, but the man is too clever, too quick, and too eloquent. And unlike the folk at CNN, he's not suffering from either TDS nor selective amnesia. Here he annihilates Kamala Harris's uh, rebrand. Claims about Kamala Harris, I want to finish that discussion. She said she didn't favor a ban on fracking now. The reality is she was one of the strongest proponents of that ban, so much so that when she was in California, she sued the Obama administration over granting fracking permits. She didn't just favor the abolition of private health insurance. She was a co-sponsor of the bill with Bernie Sanders as a U.S. Senator for Medicare for All for Americans. The reality is when you think about the Green New Deal, she was the chief proponent, not just as a co-sponsor of the legislation, but going further and saying she would end the filibuster in the Senate to ram that through. So the reality is she can say what she wants to say now. Those are actions she has taken. Is someone allowed to evolve? Of course they are. But she deserves to explain exactly why she's changed those positions, exactly what her position is. If it's not a ban on fracking, what exactly is it? What exactly is her health care plan if she no longer favors abolishing private health insurance, which just four short years ago when she ran for president, she did. And that's the kind of scrutiny that's been missing. I think Donald Trump has received plenty of scrutiny, and I give credit to him for sitting for hostile interviews that Kamala Harris has not. And that's it from me tonight. I'll see you Sunday morning for Outsiders. Good night.